Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Kai and today I finally have for you another nail tutorial. So this is going to be a 3D Sakura Kirby inspired set. I will walk you through how to do both iterations of the 3D Kirby design as well as make these really cute Wagashi inspired Japanese dessert charms on the middle finger. I am using the gorgeous Sakura set from Divok. I actually picked this up way back in March. I just haven't had a chance to use it. So I'm really excited to use these in an actual set. All of the products I use will be linked down below if you'd like to pick them up along with my discount codes. I do have one for Sweetie Nail Supply, but I'm starting with preparation of my tips. I do use the Prey nail tips. They just fit my nails pretty well since I have pretty strong curved uh, sidewalls and I'm just prepping them with the tip prep from a prey. While I'm doing this, just a safety announcement, please make sure if you are new to nails that you do your research, that you are trying as much as possible to not come in contact with uncured gel. I tend to wear gloves in all of my videos because I want to make sure that I can do nails for as long as possible without developing an allergy, which can happen if you come in contact with a lot of uncured gel. So after I prepped my tips, I'm applying the base coat from Yogurt Nail Korea. This is actually new to me. This is my first time trying it out. I wanted a thinner base gel and I had heard that this one was a bit of a runnier consistency, which it definitely is. I didn't want a super thick layer of base gel on these nails because I knew I was going in with a syrup gel and I would need a lot of layers of polish for that. So a thin one is what I went for. Here's actually a comparison between that and the Yogo Zombie base gel. I love this stuff, but it is very thick, very viscous, which is part of why I do like it if I'm trying to both apply a base gel and build some shape, some structure. So you can see that this one here is much thicker, holds its shape a lot better, which I do like, just not for this set because I know I will have a lot of layers. So I'm just going to start with that base gel on the nails. I will say this is a very interesting base coat because while it is very thin and you can get a nice thin layer, it's almost a bit stringy. And I'm wondering if that has to do with its holding power, with its strength. It almost feels like it wants to stick to itself really well. Kind of see that here as some of it pulls away and is still attached to the brush when you have a thick enough layer. So it's definitely interesting. Um, I, I can't say how the longevity is yet, but so far I'm liking it. This is DS17 from that gorgeous Sakura collection, probably one of my favorite colors and one of the main reasons I got the set. It's a really pretty lime green. It is a syrup gel, so it does need quite a few layers if you want to build up opacity, but I personally love syrup gels because I do like that touch of sheerness and that I can layer them if I want to get more color payoff. So this is something I usually do if I accidentally get a little bit of gel on the underside of the nail. I do always make sure to wipe it away before curing, that way I don't have to file it off later. And because these are press-ons for myself, I am doing some back painting, so I'm actually starting from the tip of the nail and painting the first coat towards the back end where your nail bed usually would be. I like doing this because I want a really consistent layer of color to get that really nice even color payoff. So I will start with a layer of back painting and once that's all cured, then I will go in with another layer painting normally this time from the cuticle area up to the free edge. And that just makes sure that I am getting a really nice even layer of color payoff. With syrup gels, any unevenness is going to show a little bit more because of that sheerness but I do find that Divac has a really nice creamy formula and they're definitely quickly becoming one of my favorite brands for syrup gels. For the pinky and pointer finger, I'm going to be using DS16, which is another syrup gel from the same collection. It's a gorgeous baby pink, just a really nice true pink. It's not too peachy toned. It's not too cool toned. I find it to be just right in the middle. So I am painting that in an ombre on the nail. The way that I like to do ombre a lot of the times is by blending a clear base gel into that color. I did try doing this with that Yogurt Nail Korea gel, the base gel. 
I think that slight stringiness that I was talking about though does not necessarily make this the best for doing that sort of ombre method. So I scrapped that and I just took one of the little ombre brushes and I blended it in with that. There was a little bit of color on the tip of the nail that I wanted to be completely clear, so I just wiped it away. This is my second layer of ombre. I'm just taking that same polish. I'm not bringing it up quite as high as that first layer. I want that original blend to show through, so I bring it up just under that original layer and then blend out the edge with that ombre brush. It does still help to have a clear, a kind of like a wet clear layer on the free edge of the nail because I find that, that as you're ombreing it out, it just tends to bleed together a bit more smoothly. So if you're having trouble with ombres, maybe that's something you could try, though I would only recommend that for syrup gels specifically. I don't know how much help it would be with a full opaque colored gel. That is one of the things I do like about syrup gels is they just blend so nicely with each other and as like a colored clear ombre without the need for a sponge or something like that. In fact, if you try to ombre a syrup gel with a sponge, you're going to have a pretty hard time, to be honest, because it doesn't have enough pigment to really be able to ombre with just a sponge. And then I decided I wanted some sort of like white wavy lines to look almost like wind streaks. So I'm using the Divac Vanto White Gel. This is just a normal colored gel but it is so pigmented that I feel like I can use it pretty well as like a liner gel. For really thin lines, I absolutely love my long leaf gel liner brush. It is definitely the skinniest that I own, you can see here. It just gets you really nice thin lines and I'm using that in combination actually with the leaf gel short liner brush. I find that when I'm doing smooth curved lines like this, for the areas where the bend is pretty sharp, meaning like where it turns is pretty pretty curved. I like to use the short liner brush. I feel like the long liner brush, because it is so long and so flexible, it doesn't quite curve as tightly as you might need it to on some of those sharper bends. So I go in with the short liner brush for those sharper curves to make sure that I can get kind of the skinniest line possible. I don't know how much sense that makes, but hopefully you can see what I'm talking about here. When the curve is a little bit more straight, it's easy to use that long liner brush. It's just the places where the bend is a little bit too tight that I leave that for the short liner brush, but I do kind of outline it. You can see it here where the line should be with the long liner brush, leaving that gap where I know that the bend needs to be tighter. And then I go back in the short liner. I really hope that makes sense. <laughs> I am filming this kind of late at night and so I'm hoping that my instructions are somewhat clear at least and that this is helpful. But yeah, I absolutely love these liner brushes, big fan of gel. I also really like Diami as a brush brand and the Mayo brushes. It's just that the leaf gel brushes are the skinniest ones that I've personally come across. So I am a big fan of these. And the Vanta White from Divac is such a great white gel. I do have painting gels, so I have the D-Gel X Ginny painting gel set, and I also have the MPA Art Palette, which I will actually be using later on in the video. And I love the consistency of a really nice thick painting gel for really detailed artwork. But personally, I find doing these kinds of like skinny lines I like something that's a little bit thinner, a little bit looser, so it's great to have a regular nail polish that is pigmented enough to do these sorts of art designs without having to use like that thicker painting gel. The black from Divac, Vanta Black, is the same, super pigmented. And this polish here, DG23, is actually the real reason I got the Sakura collection. It's this gorgeous sparkly petal polish. It has these little bits of, I don't know if it's like paper or some sort of thin plastic, but they look like falling petals, which is why I wanted to do the little wind streak. I just wanted this nail to look like petals falling from the sky. 
I don't know how my brush ended up like this. I think maybe I had accidentally shoved it in the bottle too quickly or something. It definitely didn't come like that because I feel like I would have remembered if that were the case. So that's my bad. It doesn't really matter for this polish though. You don't really need to apply it smoothly because it is like a chunky glitter polish. And here are the base colors done. Now onto the 3D elements. So I'm going to be using the center portion of a nail foil for this. Um, I'm just sticking it onto the handle of a bottle that I feel has about the same curvature as at least the thumbnail. In order to color my clays today, I will be using some inks from the Favori and the Chris Clay. So I'm super excited to be using this. I believe you pronounce it Chrisinia, but she is an amazing nail content creator. I'll be sure to have her socials linked below, but she came out with her own brand of 3D gels, 3D clays. I do have her full collection of the jelly clays that I am dying to use at some point soon once I have time. This is just the big pot of white. I picked this up because I know that I use a lot of white. It's just a really good base. And this is my first time using it. So it is a bit of a learning process for me. I like though that this is a consistency of clay. I do have the Yogo Milk Jam and I really love that as well. That's a bit more of like, I can only describe it as a gummy rubbery consistency. Whereas this clay is a little bit more loose, if that makes sense. It holds its shape really well. So it's not loose in the sense that it's runny. It's loose like clay is, where it almost feels like it's a bunch of particles held together, almost like really, really fine sand, if that makes any sense. I definitely see different use cases for each product. I think this kind of clay here is really good for doing shapes that need a lot of definition and really small grooves whereas something like the yoga milk jam is more for things that have a lot of smoothed shapes to it so here i'm just mixing up my custom colors for kirby i should have stuck with the previous color that i had before i added a bunch of white at the end because honestly it came out a little too light for my liking but at this point, I did not know that and there was no going back, so it is what it is. I just take a big round blob of that and I put it on the nail form. Here I am wetting down a brush with some isopropyl alcohol and I'm using that to very, very lightly smooth out the shape, get rid of any potential fingerprint marks that I might have left in the gel before flash carrying. It's important to flash cure between steps because if you're not confident in your 3D sculpting skills, or even if you are, you don't want to make a shape that you really like and then mess it up by adding something on when it's not fully cured, because then if you mess up and you need to take it off, you're going to be ruining the hard work that you've already put into that first shape. So here I'm just making another little teeny tiny ball, and this is going to be his hand. I did learn that with this specific clay, it's best to place things with your finger, at least initially because I was finding it sticking a little bit to the tools, which by the way, these are the tools that she sells on her website. I don't know if it was an accident that they got included in my order or if it was like a free gift. Either way, I really appreciate it. They worked so well with these clays and I like that they're smaller than most normal silicone tools. And later on, I realized that I could just dab them in a little bit of alcohol if I didn't want the clay sticking too much. Here I am taking the red from her classic collection and I'm just making a custom color for Kirby's feet. I don't have the whole classic collection, otherwise I would mix all my colors just using the clays themselves. I think that yields a bit of a better result because I was noticing when I was mixing in the ink and I would use too much ink, it was actually making the clay a little bit too runny. You'll see that in another clip and I'll bring it up then, but I currently don't have the whole classic collection. Not yet at least, I'm hoping to order it at some point, the rest of the colors that is. It's nice though because she has each color available for sale individually on her website, so I was able to pick up like a white, black, and the primary colors, so I'm just holding his little feet here. Kirby is a really easy beginner character. 
because most of him is just circles, just round shapes, his body, his hands, his feet. So I definitely recommend if you're starting with 3D, if you want a really easy character to mold, definitely go for like a Kirby. The Sanrio characters too are really easy to do because they have very rounded shapes to them. Anything that is rounded is going to be easier than something that is angular when it comes to 3D sculpting. So now I'm mixing together a custom green color. I want this to be like a matcha-y color because I am going to be giving him a little skewer of dango. So I believe that's how you pronounce it, but they are these little glutinous rice flour dumplings. They're a popular Japanese snack and this whole look was actually inspired by my current wallpaper on my desktop. I'll put in a little picture right here. It's just him on a boat enjoying his dango with some sakura petals floating around him. So yeah, I wanted to kind of recreate the feel of that with this set. So I'm mixing up what I think is probably the most popular combination of colors. Just the pink, the regular plain flavor color and the green which sometimes they believe is matcha flavored. In order for these colors to be really cohesive, I'm actually taking a little bit of the green and mixing it into the pink, and then I took a little bit of the pink and the green and mixed it into the white. That's just going to make all of the colors feel very much like they're in the same family. They have the same undertones. For the little handle, I'm just actually using a piece of wire. It was the smallest thing I could think of that was stick-like, so I stuck it into the pink ball first, I cured that, and now I'm just sticking on the other little dongos on top of the pink. I actually am not a huge mochi fan. I think it's more the texture flavor because I do really like um, glutinous rice flavored things. I think the mochi is a little too chewy for me, so I have not actually had dongo, but I do really like red bean paste and white bean paste. Those are some of my favorite like dessert buns to get. So yeah, I've never tried this dessert. I would be interested in doing that at some point though. Here I'm just gluing Kirby onto the nail. I haven't done his other hand yet because my plan is to actually stick the dongo into his hand when it's still wet. So I'm gluing him onto the nail using my lamp to flat cure him in place. And then I'm gonna make his other hand. While it's wet, I'm going to stick his little dessert stick into it, and then I'll cure everything together. Pardon my head, <laughs> I'm still kind of getting used to this new camera and the different angles. So I did not realize that my hair was showing in the video. Um, hoping to fix that soon though. With more practice, I think I'll be able to stay in frame a little bit better. Now I'm just taking a second nail form and this time I decided not to bother even with the bottle. I just put the nail form together and I'm going to be crafting a little Sleepy Kirby. This Sleepy Kirby is actually based on a figurine that I have. I'll put a little picture up in the corner. It's from a blind box collection and I really love him. I think he's so precious. I actually ended up getting the special one too, the moon that is like a blue purple ombre. However, my friends pointed out to me um, that in this design, his little hands that are resting kind of like below him don't exactly look like hands, but maybe something else. Um, I'll let you use your imagination. I unfortunately can't unsee it now, but I still really like the design, so I went with it. And I think once you add like the face and the feet, you, you get the picture, you understand what it actually is. So I'm just gonna flash cure him on the nail. I wanted to do his initial shaping off the nail. I ended up not liking the original hands, so I did just snip them off with like some gem clippers. Um, I think they're supposed to be just like large cuticle nippers, but I don't use them for my cuticles. So I re-sculpt the hands and then I add his little feet. I will tell you, um, I, I'm very slow at sculpting. I think I get way too caught up in the little details. I'm a bit too much of a perfectionist. And so I end up taking a lot of time. 
I had, I believe, seven hours total of footage for this whole look. Like here, I didn't like where the placement of him ended up being. I wanted him a little bit further off the nail, so I snipped him off and I tried to re-glue him in more of the middle. But yeah, I'm just a slow worker. I don't know. I think it's a little bit of the perfectionist in me. I'm trying to let things go. It's a problem I have. I need to just know when enough is enough, when to walk away, but I'm working on it. Here, I decided I wanted to give him like a little leaf hat. I didn't think that that was enough, so I ended up going in with a sakura flower as well. Although, I don't really think it ended up being exactly like a cherry blossom, more just like any sort of flower petal heart. And here's where I'm realizing that if you put too much ink into these clays that they do get very loose so i would recommend if you're going to mix them that you use very little ink or you just mix them with each other for the best custom color because that's going to give you the best product at the end here it was just a little bit too thin i was having trouble getting the right definition and it was sticking because i just used way too much alcohol ink in terms of a ratio of clay to alcohol ink. I do really love this product though for sculpting with. Again, it's just, it's a different type of clay than the Yoga Milk Jam, and it's going to give you a little bit more definition, whereas the Yoga Milk Jam I find is super easy for slightly less detailed designs that have more rounded edges. So they both serve different purposes. I'm really excited to try out more of her products. I'm not sponsored or anything. I bought these with my own money. And again, I will leave the shop link down below if you want to try them out for yourself. So for the last 3D elements, I am going to be sculpting some wagashi. These are another Japanese dessert made out of mochi and that white bean paste, a sweetened white bean paste. I somehow came across a tutorial on YouTube for how these expert dessert makers sculpt wagashi by hand. And I honestly used like the same techniques in sculpting the little charms because this clay was very similar in consistency to the wagashi. I will try to link one of those tutorials in the description down below because quite honestly, I was out of frame for a lot of this. I did not even get to fully capture how I got to this point with this charm. So I do apologize for that in advance. Again, working with a new camera setup here at a much more zoomed in angle. So I'm not used to having to stay in such a small area of the frame, but I really truly am just using the same techniques as those very skilled dessert makers. They make some absolutely gorgeous wagashi. I just, I love the whole look, the aesthetic. I appreciate so much the skill that goes into it. So I'm borrowing the same techniques. Here I am taking a round circle of that pink and I'm trying to just envelop it in some white. You'll see why when you do the bunny shape, you make little divots for the ears. And if you have that pink underneath the white, it gives the shape depth. You can see that pink peek through the white, make the ears. So here's me out of frame again. I apologize. I will try to link those tutorials for the wagashi down below because they will probably be more helpful to you than I am being here considering I am just not showing it very well at all. But I'm just taking a little round edge tool and just poking little divots into that uncured blob of clay and that's going to give me the ears. And then I just take a little round piece and stick it to the back for the tail. So here are my attempts at doing a wagashi charm on a nail. And then after all of that, I decide I don't like the placement. So I clip them off and I re-glue them down on the nail. And I take what's left of the green that I had from the dango. And I just felt like this nail was looking a little bit bare. So I made a couple more leaves. I'm just taking one of the silicone tools with a sharper edge, making the center vein, and then making little smaller veins going down the sides. And then I do take a brush with a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol and just smooth everything over. And that is the last of the 3D elements on this nail. 
I really wanted to go all out because this is my first time again at trying these clays. So I wanted to do a lot of testing, experimenting. At this point in the design, I actually did not like it. I was really questioning the green background. It just felt too plain. And so I asked for some suggestions from my community members on my Discord. If you use Discord, please feel free to join. I have the link in my description. I'm just trying to create a place where nail artists or nail enthusiasts can go to get feedback from each other, chat about recommendations and whatnot. So it's been a really good time so far. I posted the picture and asked for help on how I could fix this. And I got some really good suggestions about maybe using some glitters or something like that. And so I ended up doing the same sort of like wind lines on the green nails, adding some little white dots with a dotter tool just to give the effect of like floating particles or glitters and then adding on some sakura petal sequins that i had and i really think that that brought everything together i just i wasn't liking the plain green but i'm so glad i decided to stick with it because i do really like the end result so thank you so much again to my discord community members for encouraging me to just stick it out to figure out something that works a lot of the times i feel like if i stare at a nail design too long i start disliking it and i think it's just because i really want it to be perfect so sometimes i just need to take a step back take a break maybe get an outside perspective to paint on the details i am going in with my mpa palette this is the miss pink nail palette I really like these painting gels. They do not go anywhere. They will stay in place. I do find that they are just ever so slightly less pigmented, I would say, than some of the degel painting gels. So if you're looking for variety, I would say go with the MPA Art Palette because you saw there how many colors it came with. And that's about the same price as a 15 color set from degel. So Yes, the D-Gel ones are a little bit more expensive. They are slightly more pigmented. I think it just depends on your preference, which one you go with in that case. The MPA Art Palette, a little bit thinner, a little bit less opaque, whereas D-Gel is a little bit thicker and a little bit more opaque. I do really wanna try out some of MPA's other products though. I know they have like some clear jelly colors, some 3D gels in a squeezy tube that look really handy, almost like the Jello Jello zigzag gels. There are just, there's so many fun, innovative products out there that I really want to try. I just haven't the time or the budget currently. So I'm super thankful to places like Sweetie Nail Supply that have made me an affiliate and very much thankful to all of you who order using my codes and support this channel. Um, it really does mean a lot to me. It means I get to keep doing what I love. So thank you. Here I am just outlining his eyes. This is actually the degel black paint because the MPA art palette, again, not quite as opaque and I wanted this outline to be very clear. Here's what that paint pot looks like. I do really enjoy that it has that silicone cover. It just keeps my paints really nice and clean even if they accidentally get turned over. And I'm using that to create the little Sleepy Kirby on the other nail. I'm using that same short leaf gel liner brush for the details. And then if you're somebody who struggles closing the degel paint pots, this is what I do. I put the lid on almost all the way while keeping a little bit of a gap and then I close the very last bit of it. That just keeps too much air from being trapped below. And here are the Sakura petal sequins that I mentioned. I pulled these out so I could add them to those green nails just to tie in that pink a little bit better to give it the same sort of like floaty petal feeling. I don't use too many, just a couple on each nail. The first method I tried doing this with is just putting down a clear layer of gel, putting the sakura petals on top and then using one of those liner brushes to smooth the gel over the petals. This worked okay, um, I did find it caused quite a few little air bubbles though. So the next time I do this, I actually just glue them down with my handy, trusty McCart rhinestone glue and then just top coat over everything. 
but I was a little bit too gung-ho because I forgot I had wanted to matte top coat my charms. So here I am going in, I'm matte top coating all of the charms. I'm trying to concentrate it mostly on the little 3D elements themselves for protection. I'm curing that and then I will go in with the clear top gel around the rest of the nail. On this nail, I had to use the lighter brush to apply that matte top coat so I didn't affect the already glossy base of the nail. You don't have to top coat the charms. Um, they are non-stick when they cure, which I really enjoy. I appreciate that they're non-wipe, but since I had done like painted details over them, like Kirby's face and whatnot, I wanted that protective layer. And so I do just go in and I matte top coat them and then go around each charm with the clear. Here's where being less of a perfectionist could definitely save me time because I think that whole process, just the last bit of the nail took mm, probably at least an hour. I was just really trying to get the top coat as close to the charms as possible without going over the matte top coat like you can see here and vice versa. So I just needed to learn how to be a little bit more efficient and not worry too too much about the really tiny details because right now doing nails takes me forever but usually I am pretty happy with the results I just I need to learn to let some things go when they're not quite as important to the overall look but I also need to apply that to other areas of my life I am like that in teaching too which is why I haven't probably been around as much lately um, I am back in school so that's taking up a good chunk of time, but it was really nice to be able to sit down and do a nail design after so long. Here are the final results. I am super pleased with how they turned out. I definitely have some things that I might change if I were to ever do this design again. I learned a lot about how to work with these sorts of clays as I'm usually using that more like gummy type of clay. And I'm really excited to see where I can take them. I hope this video was helpful. I hope that even though it was out of frame for some of the parts that you could still get the general gist of what I was doing. If you give any of these techniques a try, definitely tag me in what you make. I would love to see your creations. Check out my Discord down below. I really just appreciate all of you being here, watching and commenting. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you next time. Thank you, bye.